Okay, so this is the Solon One Twenty Five, driving all the LED and uh, fluorescent light bulbs I could find on hand, and uh, it is a real little workhorse. You know, it is actually what's providing all the light uh, in the downstairs of my house at this time. Hey, birds, say hi. Wave, Lucky. Wave. Good girl. Okay, so let's start with the panel. This is a semi-flexible solar panel, and I first used one of these on a conversion for my children's little electric car, and it's held up great, uh, so it's just a great choice. Because it's semi-flexible, it doesn't have a glass top, it's not gonna shatter and send glass. If you throw this in the Jeep to go camping, you don't need to worry about this shattering. It's lightweight, it's thin, and it's very durable, so it's just made a great choice. Okay, so moving on to the frame, this is furniture grade PVC, and this makes a great choice because it's easily accessible to people all over the place, it's readily available, and the furniture grade PVC has a very nice look to it. So Google furniture grade PVC if you want to learn more about that. And moving on here to the corners, I have a guy in the shop that's machining these corners so that the panel insets flush into the corner. It holds it very securely. These corner pieces will be available for sale at teslamaker.com so follow along to make sure you, that you don't miss out on where to get these as well as you could machine these yourself if you have access to the machine and the tools. I do have a little corner rounder that clips the edge of the panel to a quarter inch radius so it all fits in very snug, very clean frame. There's nothing exposed on the outside of the frame so if you set this outside your tent and your camping and there's some dew or moisture everything that's important is underneath and up off the ground a little bit to protect all the important things on the bottom so okay so before i flip this panel over i want to say something about these little uh, led light bulbs and now in the past i've included a super jewel ringer in the solon ones and that was so that you could drive led light bulbs without running the inverter and these little light bulbs provide a great alternative solution to that. A lot of people have trouble winding their own uh, super jewel ringers, etc. It's a lot of work. This makes a great alternative. These things are incredibly efficient. I've done some testing with them on my power supply, checking their current draw. They are just amazing. As soon as I ordered these two and played around with them, I did a bulk order from China so I can get in a large inventory of these because I'm just really, really excited about the possibilities with these little bulbs. And I will make these bulbs available at teslamaker.com. But check this out, folks, they are USB powered. And what's cool about this particular solar charge controller is it has USB outlets right here that are independent of the inverter. So you can plug these in here and get lighting for you know a campsite, whatever. You can charge an iPad if you want right here at this point and it just makes a great little uh, USB power source. And what's cool about having it on the solar charge controller is it still protects your batteries. This will not allow the batteries to discharge below 11 volts, which is in the range of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. So it just makes a great solution for powering uh, you know, loads without having to run the inverter. Okay, so we're out here in the sunshine and we've got the solar charge controller here and I wanna go over some of its features. This is a really nice solar charge controller in that it has an LED green light here to show you that it's charging. It's got a lot of cool little icons, but some of the really neat things I like are like the voltage. We've got a voltage display right here showing us the voltage on the battery. We can cycle through some other really neat options like this one. This is the voltage from the solar panel. And this varies depending on the light hitting the panel, so that's quite useful. Over here we've got the amperage coming in. So right now it's at 0.8 to 0.9 amps. So basically an amp coming in right now. We can cycle through a few other things here. It's in the 24 hour mode. That means that this will work 24 hours a day. There's some other ways you can program this so that you could have some outside lighting that comes on only at night and then this whole uh, this would turn off to load during the daytime but that of course for a solar one is disabled here we've got our load which right now is zero now if i flip on the inverter you'll see a little bit of load on here third of an amp until the inverter settles down and goes into its no load mode which at, in which case it's so light it doesn't even show up on the display another reason i love this inverter over here we have the kilowatt hours now i've not read in the manual exactly this may be the kilowatt hours in that it's received during a certain charge cycle, but I have yet to have 
read up on this particular feature. But all in all, I'm really happy with the features. Not only having the USB ports here for driving the USB lighting or charging, but just to have all this information right here that you can just glance at and uh, look at, it's really nice. So testing will uh, determine whether or not this solar charge controller works as well as others I've used in the past. So far I'm very happy with it, and if it continues to perform as it seems to be performing currently, this will probably be the charger that I utilize on all of these Solin 125 units. Okay, so moving on to the inverter. I ordered inverters from all over the internet. I've got a pile of inverters down there on my bench that I've tested. And while they're all quoted as being 200 to peaking at 500 uh, watt inverters, they are not all created equal. And quickly, this one stood out among the pack. And what makes this one unique is its no load current draw it was tested at 136 milliamps. And that just really impressed me because if you're out, say, building a tree house with your kids, and you run a jigsaw or something, you cut a board, and you drill a few holes, then it's sitting there in the sun. You don't want an inverter that's burning half an amp or a quarter amp doing nothing. You want to be capturing the sunlight, you know, building up uh, energy in your batteries for the next cut. Well, this inverter with that very low current draw in a no-load state is going to just work great for that. Now beyond that, be sure to watch at the end of this video where I test different things. A six inch grinder, my drill press, jigsaws. This inverter is up to the task. It's a 250 watt inverter. It peaks at 500 watts and it just in every way seems to be a perfect inverter for this particular design. Now I will say that if you live overseas and you need a different inverter, this particular design of this kit will allow you to choose different inverters and to place them here. Uh, this is really just a double-sided adhesive tape that I've used on hexacopters, etc. It's It's a really strong outdoor quality uh, double-sided adhesive and it holds this on here great. But if you do need to remove it or work on it for any reason, it's possible and it doesn't damage the uh, solar panel. Okay, so at this point, some of you probably have a really big question as to where are the batteries? Well, the batteries are inside these edge tubes. And the reason that's so exciting to me is that puts them away from the heat and out here in a white tube so they will stay cool in the sunlight. And it really balances out nice. It makes a great handle for carrying the unit. And the battery capacity is the same as the previous solid one. So it really is a 20 amp hour, 12 volt style lithium iron phosphate battery. And it's capable of 256 watt hours. And this battery pack is so easy to build. You'll see in the how to build video that this pack is really just screw and twist together. If you buy the wiring harness, you'll be able to just screw the two end uh, nuts onto the wiring harness, run it up, it'll have one of these connectors. So there's a couple options. You could put one tube in this side and one battery in this side will give you 10 amp hours. And then in the future, you could upgrade and put another one in this side because this all comes apart. None of this is glued. It's just screwed together, comes apart. It's easily upgradable. So the battery pack is inside of here comes up here and here I've got a Y wiring harness. It comes out here and I've got a connector here so that if you ever put this in long-term storage, there is a like a 10 to 15 amp milliamp draw to the solar charge controller, which is fine if you're using this, but if you are going to store this, all you have to do to put it in storage mode is disconnect this. That shuts down the solar charge controller and now this can be in storage with no residual drain to the solar charge controller. So that's an important little feature, but going on to the wiring harness, this comes up here and forms a Y. So each battery pack can just be slid into the pipe, you plug it into one of these connectors on this side, if you want to upgrade you plug in a second one on this side, and that's really it. That's your battery pack. These are very uh, amazing batteries. They're spec'd at 780 watt load continuous in this arrangement with a peak of 2000 plus watts out. So we are well under the battery's rating. I think it's at 2000 charge discharge cycles. It's still something like 80% life. So I'm really excited about the battery. Now, when, you, when I get into the how to build video, I'll go over some of the details of the battery, some of the choices I made and the way this thing is assembled. But anyway, it makes a clean, clean build. Everything is inset below the uh, frame. So nothing's sticking out. Um, I really like having stuff protected from the elements. You can put a little uh, shorty extension cord here that you can pop out if you want, or even keep all the plugs. You can put a small power strip in here. 
and flip this thing over and it's all out of the sunshine out of the uh you know any dew that may arise in the morning etc so anyway that's pretty much the overall check out the clips here on the rest of this video on the different loads this thing can drive be sure to follow along as i bring these into production and make these available as well as how to build and all of the other good stuff so all right folks let's all keep experimenting Here's a neat one. This is the voltage of the solar panel. So how much uh, voltage is coming in through the solar panel. Right now it's at zero because it's face down the table. But watch this. As I bring this up and point that, you can see that just pointing over here at the edge of the light, we're up at 10.9 volts. Now I'm going to hold this over the lights here. And you can see it's 12.6, 12.9 almost 13, 13.2. I'm just holding it with one hand up here near the lights. And the green light on the panel right there means that it's charging. Now of course it's not charging fast enough to overcome the draw from the load, but it is still cool to see the panel charging and receiving energy in a feedback loop from the lights themselves. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we're going to try running the blender on this uh, Sol in One Twenty Five, and we're doing a family favorite recipe. This is a cashew uh, pimento cheese. It's actually a vegan recipe, and we'll put the recipe in the video description. Uh, so if you're interested in the recipe, check that out. So I will uh, flip this over. The inverter is already on here. We'll plug in the blender. Let's fire it up. Looks like it's about time to 3D print a lid for this blender. Alright, that looks great. So nice and creamy. And the Inverter is not even warm and it does have very active cooling so if it did start to get hot it would have cooled down but very nice I'm quite impressed definitely adds to the functionality all right that looks great so rem remember if you're interested in the recipe check out the video description it's a family hit and has been for multiple generations so